out. How do you feel, man? Now you're getting the full treatment. Thanks for coming, Chip. You're very welcome. Well, I get a lot of people that come over and they, they look at the paintings and um, they're kind of surprised because a lot of times they will have seen photographs of them, things online or a postcard or something, and uh, they come over to me and they say, gee, I'm really glad to see these pa paintings are real paintings. They're lumpy and they're bumpy and drippy and wacky and funky and worn and scumbled and all that. And, um, and I tell them that makes me happy because I feel as far as my painting goes, that uh, I'm kind of a proponent, and I know you are too, of the New York School and the whole idea of what it means to use pain as a kind of a special material and that the pigments and the oils and the solvents and all these other things have a certain kind of um, almost an alchemical kind of um, magic quality, maybe. We are alchemists, yeah. And um, I think that uh, in a lot of ways it's been great for me because, it, like I was saying, there is a kind of, a, for me, there is an analogy between making a painting, the history of making a painting, and the way that art history is made. And uh, one of the things that I love particularly about New York art history is the history of the New York School and the beginnings with people like Hans Hoffman and some of these other artists that really saw paint, pigment, the, uh, the gesture of making a mark and these other things is important more than just what you end up with in the end. There is a whole um, process a, uh, a performative aspect of, of making a painting and that all of that stuff for me is very important and part of the reason that I like to do what I'm doing and I, I love to uh, work with the history of, uh, of the New York school and New York painting and New York art in general is that that's kind of a way for me to sort of gather all of these things together. I don't want to be exclusive where I'm starting to push things away so much as I would rather be inclusive and sort of bring a lot of things in. Uh, you could say, for example, that um, Marcel Duchamp made a major breakthrough when he decided that he could use ready-mades and he didn't have to make decisions or he didn't have to make them, he just sort of presented them. He made the decision and said, this is art. In a certain way, I look at the New York art scene as just a huge ready-made. And what I'm doing is simply figuring out ways of trying to present that ready-made in a certain way. And uh, doing that with the same material that these people have kind of been making history with for the last 70 or 80 years I think is a real nice uh, kind of continuation, a, a great analogous, analogous way of representing what's been going on. And it, you know, I'm not really religious, I mean I believe in God, but for me the painting and the New York painting it's not religious, but it has that kind of, a, for me, it has that kind of a, a dedication of, uh, and a sincerity of belief. And, uh, gee, I love it. I was particularly noticing the, uh, the minimalism painting over here that you were kind of about a third, maybe the way done with. The colliding timelines? Yeah. And, and I noticed uh, under, I think it's the, the M in minimalism, there's a drip that comes down from it. And I was just like, that looks just so damn symbolic. Because <laughs> it's so anti-minimalism, but this, the, the drip, you know? That's one of the great things about painting, is that uh, some things you can control, some things you can't control. I think Milton Resnick summed it up really well, was he was saying, you know, there's only so much you can do with a brush. <laughs> but on the other hand, that's what painting is. It's like, you know, or a, a brush or a finger or a palette knife or a spray gun or whatever. There's only so much you can do with it. But 
that's all you need to do with it. Paint is paint, and uh, and even after you put the paint down, then there's things that start to happen, and you know, it's just uh, for me, it's a great way of uh, communicating things. It kind of makes you slow down, uh, think about um, a lot of things that you might not normally think about. It's it's the total antithesis of something like video or music or performance. And uh, I like that. I like that there are things that make you uh, shift your perceptions into a different uh, into a different gear than you're normally in. Do you do you get a lot of flack from people who like look at these things and say, "Why isn't this person on here? Why isn't this person on here?" Sometimes, but a lot of a lot of the work I. And this is also another important thing for me is that I uh, I put out calls on Facebook and I've I've actually had uh, paintings that I've put into shows and I have like little pads of paper and I say if anybody's got any suggestions give them to me or while I'm in front of a piece of, of one of my paintings at a show if somebody comes up and says hey I should be in there or this or that I said give me your information they'll give me a card or I'll write it in my little book I always have a book and a, a pencil with me so I can keep notes on all that stuff. Uh, recently I showed a major painting of the East Village in Chelsea and I had a couple of people that came back and said oh you're sloppy you should have put in my gallery and <laughs> Although their gallery was at the same address as another gallery and they were there after a certain period of time I said fine if I get the painting back I'll put you in on the other hand I've had people that say uh, I don't want to be on the painting. <laughs> I don't want to be on the painting because I feel that this is going to infringe on my privacy. And then I have to write them back and say something like, "Well, this is all public knowledge. I mean, you can pick up a phone book, or you can click on the internet, or you can just put your name into into Google, and this pops up. So it's not like I'm really infringing on your privacy." And then they sort of go, "Well, you're right. And besides, I think this is a historically important thing." So I changed my mind. <laughs> stuff like that but I actually it's important for me to feel like the community was part of the whole thing so when I like I say this East Village uh, map I probably started working on the actual map about two years ago I'd done another fairly large version even before that so probably started that one about 2004 so there was a couple of years of research on that one but that was mostly just galleries um, I feel that it's important to give the community a chance to kind of have uh, input into what's going on. Uh, it, another time that the, the internet really is a valuable tool, it gives people a chance to be part of my little version of history. Even so, there's still going to be people that get missed and maybe people that are on, on the map that other people think might sh shouldn't be on the map. Um, but my attitude is that there is no such thing as a perfect history. There, there can't be a perfect history. history. History doesn't stop just because it's over. Uh, it's continually changing. It's continually being updated. It's continually being expanded and revised and reinterpreted. And um, what part of the project is about is, is where you can go wrong just as well as where you can go right. So if I go wrong, you know, I apologize, but that's an example of, I mean, if you read Irving Sandler or Rosalind Krauss or take your pick of, of uh, people that have written art history books, just because those books have been accepted by the academies or maybe generations of people have read them and accept them as truth doesn't necessarily mean that they are perfect. And um, so what, what I'm doing is I'm kind of sh using myself as the as the goof to you know show people that I will work as hard as I can. I'll take years to try to put this together. But if I miss it, hey, I'm not perfect. On the other hand, the difference between me and someone like Irving Sandler is if someone comes to me after I've shown the painting and comes to me and says, geez, I'm not on this, or so-and-so's not on that, I can always say, okay, I'll get the painting back and I'll add you in, whereas 
it's not so easy for Irving Santa to go back and say, well, I'll take back all the 400,000 of these we sold and I'll <laughs> pencil this into the margin on every one of these. So in that way, it, it's kind of a little more personal, but um, I, do, I do get complaints and I try, to, I try to put in as much as I can. What is maybe even more difficult is because the paintings all have a particular size. People ask me, how do you know when you're finished? And I tell them I'm finished when they get full. So at that point, it's kind of difficult because if I have to make the decision between who I put in before it f the thing is totally filled up, that does require a certain amount of editing. I recently had someone who asked me, uh, gee, I'm your friend and I've lived in the East Village for 30 years and I'm a poet and I'm a this and I'm a that. How come I'm not on the map? And I wrote him back and I said, well, if I get the map back, I'll put you on the map. But then I had to stop and ask myself, why isn't he on the map? And the answer was, during my process of research, I had to go through and I had to look at who were in the Whitney Biennials, who were in these other major shows of the East Village, who were uh, reviewed in the most articles in the major magazines. And so by doing all this process of cross-referencing and getting a basic group of people, if so-and-so was never mentioned in any of these things, they would have a lesser chance of being included in a map that got filled up than somebody who was in, say, I was in Colab's Times Square show, I was in the 1984 Whitney Biennial, and I was also in the East Village Now show that was in uh, Cleveland in 1984. You know, so in that way, even I have to make some editorial things in that, and I have to go with the consensus of what other people have said. Although, you know, if I had my way, I would put everyone in, but then I would, I would have maps that are actually larger than the areas that they, they map. <laughs> That's what, that was my next joke. Uh, I was going to be doing an East Village map that would actually be four times larger than the East Village itself, but I was going to be able to include everyone in that. Make it a gigantic installation piece. <laughs> <laughs>